Hello everybody, it's SD Mad Haven here today. Sorry about that little intro lag, whatever. My mouse, I have it set up right now to be uh, kind of double tapping, and I've done this recording like twice. First time we did upload it, I did take it down because I heard the audio in it, and I was like, no, we're not doing that. We're going to fix that. You know, just because audio, it, it can be so mean at times. Along with that, I had my AC on too, so kind of just really took away from the sound and kind of muffled me and staticky and i also had the wrong settings on too while recording i had stream settings on rather than recording settings so it was recording at like six thousand bits which is not a lot compared to what i normally record at which is eighteen thousand. so i jumped it up by 500 to get the audio and also to get me here hello how are you nice to uh you know nice for you to see me i i guess it's kind of weird but all right, off topic. Let's jump on topic. Cold War. Maps. Matchmaking. Penetration. Damage. You know, just simple things to go over. Um, speaking of, let's actually start off with the damage. Um, update 6.0, whenever it released, I'd say about six months ago, they increased penetration by a lot. Standard rounds were able to go through the front of the mouse. Along with that, you were able to... You know, not even rely on premium. Then they readjusted it a little bit. They left the premium with the penetration bonus, it feels like. And standard rounds, they decreased the penetration just a little bit, not a lot. At least from my perspective of playing the game and investing a thousand matches a month and maintaining a thousand matches basically every single day, skipping over. Right now I'm at like 1,062 over the course of the last 30 days. But how it's set up and everything else that goes on it's really saddening to see the damage getting dropped compared to how it should have been i would rather see them revert that back and leave the penetration values the way they were leave the damage the way that they were just because it's less time to kill you're not spending countless time trying to take down a light tank light tanks especially benefited the absolute most from update 6.0 along with mediums faster lightweight mediums they benefited the absolute most because you know they have top speed and taking 25 percent less damage or even 15 percent less damage per hit means rather than getting four shot you're guaranteed to only get six shot or maybe even two shot well actually five shots in to be able to take them down now damage on the bigger tanks i would like them to see them reworking those specifically because with 18 second reloads or even a 20 second reload and then, you know, doing the lowest roll possible because it, it feels extremely consistent now. So the FP4005, for instance, the Death Star, the Ag Panzer E100, even the 60TP and let's say the E100 and anything with a 140 or higher, the damage does not feel like it has been decreased. And artillery... It, it still hits really hard. I've, I've still been hit for a thousand hit points and I feel like even with the rebalance and with the damage debuffs and everything else, artillery still hits. It feels like for the same amount. I'm still getting, you know, two shot by double arties and tier 10 matchmaking inside my tier 8 along with that. Um, whenever you look at PC, they don't have AP rounds in artillery. Along with that, they only have half the penetration values of console, which means console artillery is super buffed compared to what we see over on PC. So if we take the, let's say, T92 HMC, for instance, over on console, it has 2,400 base damage, while in PC it only has 1,300. On console, it has 120 millimeters of high explosive pin, 370 penetration with the AP rounds, if they land, that is. And... PC, they only have 60 millimeters overall and no AP. So, on console, you know, I've been caught out in the open playing in my mouse. Let's say on Steps. Steps is actually the map that this happened. We had three mouses. We were just playing around. And we got killed by a platoon of three arties that were all T92s, nothing but AP rounds. And within about, I'd say, a minute and 30 seconds, all three of us were out of the game because of AP rounds from artillery. And there's no hiding against it over on steps, especially if you're taking the left side flank, because you have all the rocks and rubble out in the open, and then you're driving along the side of the hill. So as you're driving along the side of that hill, you know, and you're taking little side peaks, your entire side's exposed 
for artillery to be able to shoot all the way from that top right corner, top left corner. From where my hand is. Yeah, we'll, we'll say... Actually, it's over here. It'd be over here. Sorry, I'm still learning my camera. But, um... It, it's just not comfortable. At all. You know, the way that it's set up right now, the penetration values and the damage, it... I would like to see it get bumped up just a little bit. Not a lot, but to try and balance it out to where it's not, you know, consistently low rolling. And for weapons like you see on the T-32 here in this replay, you know, it has a 320 alpha. But there's moments that you'll see it roll for 209, I believe, to be the absolute lowest, or 239. Which, you would be better off firing a 90mm by that point. So... There is that. Like my LPC, my LPC, you know, I get consistent rolls of 240, 260, and it has a 280 alpha. Now, you know, whenever you have a reload that's 14 seconds and then you get a double shot, and your damage is about the same as a 105 with 320 alpha, there, there's something wrong there. You know, and it, it's just the consistency, it's too inconsistent compared to what we see for the base damage. You know, base damage is almost unreliable to be looking at anymore because you're not going to be able to high roll above it. And if you do high roll above it, it's usually 10 damage or even 20 damage more than what your actual damage says. So it, it's just not that fun. Now, talking about Cold War and what I would like to see improved upon Cold War is I have not played Cold War. Brute, I do appreciate you buying me that T-72 Urel, but I have not yet played it. Um, and that's because it it's costing me gold to be able to swap over to Cold War and to be able to swap back. It's cost, costing me 120 gold. Let's say I want to put a couple matches in Cold War, swap back. It's going to cost me 120 gold every single time because I don't want to transfer a crew over there because I don't play it enough to have, you know, a maxed out crew over there. But whenever I do play, I don't want to play with a one perk crew, with three perk crew, you know, and invest the thousand matches needed to be able to get it as a nine perk crew, which is an outrageous amount of matches. But then again, it's a lot less matches compared to what the old crew system was like, where you could put 5,000 matches in one crew, have 18, 20 perks, and that's it. And not even be maxed out. So really... In the end, the crew system works out really well because you can max out a crew in a thousand matches, which means if I really wanted to, I can max out a crew a month if I really wanted to. Now, going over the new maps, the new maps, they're too big. Any tank under 35 kilometers, they are suffering because if you're halfway down the map, your base starts to get capped. You're too slow to be able to make it back. You're better off just pushing forward. And if, if your team is the last team alive and you're all slow super heavies it's game over you're not going anywhere it's you're, you're done there's no point in even moving by that point because the match is over unless they decide to get off the base cap and just use the base cap to try and make you fall back which really should be how it is but this match that you're seeing right now in the t32 it's team destruction and honestly it's how these maps should be these maps the newer ones des fuel um the map they're on now i don't know the name of it the winter one ko bang they need to be encounter or team destruction. I do not see standard battles working out the way that they are unless the uh, base caps were closer. So like multiple spawns and rather than having, let's say the caps like this, swap them to where they're in the middle of the map or make it to where they both go up top, down low, dead center. That way it's not like side corner of the corner where it's, you know, you got 1400 by 1400 and then this length is just trying to travel down there and one flank falls apart and you're suddenly halfway through the map and you're about 700 to 800 meters away from the cap and most of the maps are really hilly so it makes it really hard to drive around them so tanks that have 35 kilometers 35 is pretty comfortable on the new maps along with you know anything under 30 though they're suffering heavily and i've been playing my mouse a lot more i've been playing my oe3 a lot more and it's just really hard to be able to you know stay mobile you you cannot stop if you stop too long or you sit in a position for over a minute you're losing time on trying to get to their cap or trying to get back to your cap 
Now, don't get me wrong, you know, you can get down to the positions, you can rush to an area that you know combat's going to happen by looking at the way the spawns are, and then just getting down into the fight as quick as you can. But with the newer maps, I'm just not a real big fan of how they're set up in the slightest. And each time I end up on them anymore, it it just it doesn't feel good. It's It's not helping with marks, it's not helping with win rate, it's just they're too big and you know i i just like them to get readjusted a little bit team destruction however on those new maps a lot of fun but whenever it's standard battles and they hit the cap it's not fun other than that you know we went over quite a bit you know jumping into the replay here this position that you guys see me in right now this is actually really strong just because you have access to a lot so with the 10 degrees of gun depression the T32 offers, you know, you, you guys saw me pop over, aim my turret off, and it was just to where you, could, you couldn't see the hatch. T32 on this map, hatch on the right side, depending on what side you're coming up, it, it's just so nice. Now, damage, matchmaking, each time they buff a tier 10, uh, tier 8s tend to suffer a little bit, which, well, actually, more than a little bit. Each time there's more rebalancing done with tier 10s, and let's say they improve a tier 10, uh, tier 8s suffer a lot more. With the penetration values that they did increase a while back and decreasing damage, you know, even if you have heavy armor on your tier 8, uh, it, it just it doesn't feel good because they're going through you no matter what it almost feels like. You know, they can go through the gun mantle at times that can be over 280 armor. You know, going through the spaced armor without a problem. Another thing is, is that these new maps are really glitchy. If you guys have been watching me over on Twitch, uh, we, we've taken a vanguard on this map, driving down into the uh, water waterways, and you know, going about 80 down the hill, down the stairs, and then hitting the edge of the sidewalk and going underneath the map and just getting stuck. It's like it's a vanguard. Come on, dude, tiny tank. You guys didn't test that. <laughs> uh, another thing, and this is specifically for the devs. I would like to see public beta testing, public, you know, beta servers. I don't want them to implement an update into the public queues to try it out. I would much rather have it to where we have access to a beta. I would participate inside the beta. I would go through and try my best to help out getting everything coming into the game the way it should be coming into the game. Also, another complaint that I have with the devs, and this is for Minto specifically, I'm sorry for calling you out on this, but your system over on Discord, where you had 400 votes on one thing, while wow, there was over 3,000 votes over on the forms, and you guys want to say that the forms is toxic and really hard to use, they become toxic because you make them toxic. And Discord, there's a lot more control on Discord, and if you guys want to remove somebody and kick somebody because their points and views do not match yours, that's wrong. I've ran into a couple of guys who have been kicked off of your guys' Discord because they wanted to voice their opinion. Now, another thing I do not like about your guys' Discord is you have super slow-mo over on your reports and everything else. It's like there's a lot of things that I want to go over about getting stuff fixed inside the game. But whenever I'm only allowed to upload one per hour and then you're stuck inside of a line, it actually took my request for the 279e and the IS4 and 268 version 5, almost two days to get uploaded to your guys' Discord. And to me, that's not right. You guys should be getting those requests, problems, right away, and it should not be delayed. I would rather you have a couple of people that handle it, filter it, you know, reword it if they need to. I understand that sometimes my spelling's not the best or the way that I describe something's not the best. I try my best to do it, but we all make mistakes. We're human. Now, with all of that, you know, if you guys want to get over in Discord, go voice your complaints. You know, I'm here to try and make the game better. I'm here to try and help out everyone that watches me play. My goal is to go over mechanics, gameplay, review tanks, you know, because you guys, you, you spend money on them. You know, or if you're buying premium or playing for free, speaking of which, I still need to make my free-to-play. I've been slacking off that for quite some time. But I, I want the game to be better. I want the community to grow. I want 
you know, people inside the game to get better. I want them to grow. It's literally my goal and the entire reason why I started doing YouTube and the reason why I started investing more time. And I know I haven't uploaded in about a week and I want to start doing daily uploads, but with the way the matches have been going the past few days, I'm getting caught out in the open on the new maps, getting absolutely decimated. And then you get frustrated a little bit, a little bit upset. And once you're in that mindset and you continue to play, you start to struggle a lot more than anything else because you just don't have a clear head and you're not playing right. And by the way, this match was absolutely fantastic. It was the first mark for the T32. So, you know, if you guys had the audio muted because I'm being a little bit upset and toxic, maybe. Oh, wait, we got to move. XP earn. Which way do we got to move? I give up. Whatever. But... It is what it is, and there's only so much that we can really go over. But I want the game to get better. And with the ways to make it better would be, you know, public beta testing. Announce it. If they need to, add it to the game. So, like, whenever we tap B and you come back here, you got Cold War, World War II, Custom Games, you know, Tank Commander. Add down below this public test. And then you know, add like a little icon inside there where you can voice your opinion, send a message to somebody, or it would leave a link to the Discord and what you can use to try and get inside the Discord or where to report bugs and everything else. Or try and have um, coordinators inside there that are specifically there to overview and then select a couple of people at a time to, you know, test out certain setups and certain tanks and see how, how they work. So with the speed bonuses, this is actually something I really want to go over. Whenever you're taking a look at the equipment, you have traction system, advanced power terrain, you know, on the T32, if we were to throw those on. So I think the best one we could actually take a look at would actually be the, the Kriovets 1. So tier 8, Russia. The Kurt, I like to use the Kurt as an example for a lot of things just because it's a solid tank all around. If you guys do not have this tank, I highly recommend it. So... Going over to Module Viewer, you know, we have 22 reverse, 46.2 top speed. So that top speed is really nice. You know, it's 4.2 kilometers faster, 2 kilometers faster in reverse. It's really good numbers to have. Along with that, you know, the second that you put these bonuses on, let's say, a light tank. So light tank between tier 8. All right, we still have Russia selected. Here I am, you know, being a complete Muppet. So... The 10% bonus on the Vanguard, you know, we're going 7 kilometers faster along with running fuel. So we're actually going all the way up to a 15, so probably, you know, 80, 79 around there. But the still concealment combined with the top speed, reverse speed, 20. So 10% on the reverse speed as well. And then let's say we go to a slower tank, for instance, like the 60 TP or whatever tank, a 10% bonus in that reverse, you know, percentages can be extremely one-sided compared to most. So with a 10% bonus in reverse right here, it'd only be 1.4 kilometers with the 14 in reverse. And then for top speed, we'd probably be seeing 37, 38. And, you know, the faster the tank, the more to benefit. The slower the tank, the less to benefit the worst the, the equipment is to actually have on top of that tank. And I'd rather see them have set numbers rather than a percentage. Because percentages, it, this is not an MMO. This is a simulator competitive game. MMOs base a lot of stuff off of percentages. And whenever you do percentages, you can really break stuff. So, it, it, it is what it is. And as time goes on, hopefully I do see that... No, hopefully they do see that. Hopefully the devs will notice and decide to try and fix it up a little bit. Because right now, it's not in a good spot with how that's put together. Other than that, it was nice having you guys here. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a like. It helps me out a crap ton. I also have a PayPal setup if you guys want to have donations. Uh, donations are specifically for improving for stuff like this with the green screen, the camera, the lights. Um, I think the next thing that we will be going for is a different mic. But other than that, I'm extremely happy with where I am. I don't mind investing my own money to, you know, help you guys out with your gameplay or 
go over anything else you guys need me to. And if you have any requests, please leave it down in the comments section. Or if you have me over on Discord, you know, drop it down. Um, throwing it out there. The FV4202P, keep in mind, that is the next tank we are going to be going over. So I'll be putting some matches inside that over the next few days. And hopefully we'll be getting a, be getting a review out on that tank. If you guys want to catch me live, uh, just over on Twitch. You'll be able to see me. If you have any questions or if you guys want to see gameplay of a specific tank, be my guest. Ask. And if I have it, we will play it. So, until next time, see you on the battlefield.